Good morning. I'm Jackie St. James and I'm waiting here to interview Clive St. James. He's agreed to talk to me this morning and I'm just waiting for him to come out of makeup. Can you believe how long he's been in this? I think he's trying to get rid of the bald spot. Anyway, he'll be here in a moment. Clive, come and join us, will you? And as if by magic. <laughs> as if by magic. <laughs> So, my darling, I have seen you in so many theatres across the country, private parties, all sorts of different venues. I think my favourite was actually the Richmond Theatre in Yorkshire. Such a beautiful old theatre, don't you Well, think? quite. That's why Prince Charles loves it there so much. Yes. I, oh, yes, exactly. Anyway, what I'd like to know really is why do uh, companies, big and small, why do they prefer to choose you when there are, let's face it, there are an awful lot of magicians and um, comedians about. Absolutely, and a lot more famous than me as well. I may hold a few world records, but that doesn't necessarily cut the mustard. I think, really, I'm not in competition uh, with the magicians. I think of myself as an entertainer. So there's not going to be any appearing elephants, no disappearing helicopters, I make the company the stars. The members of the company become the stars. I fill the stage with management, with the workers, because there's nothing more memorable than having someone that they know or someone that's new to the company that's going to be perhaps introduced to the company for the first time helping me with a magic trick or even performing some magic there. That's what I sell, is memories. And that's what they talk about when they meet people, months on, in the corridors, their customers, they say, oh, do you remember when Clive cut your arm off? Did, did it really hurt? <laughs> yeah. It seemed quite a seamless transition. I've got the photograph of it. So that, that's what I do. And I love to go off script, because I've got so much experience from the world of stand-up comedy, uh, mostly with chatting with people, uh, putting people at ease. I remember one company, and I'm not going to mention the company because what happens when I do, you get everyone ringing up and saying, oh, do you want to book me? Now, I'm not going to mention the company, but I had three of their fairly high level uh, staff up on stage and they were all going to help me with this particular illusion. I started to chat to each one of them and hey presto, they had a love for telling jokes. So all of a sudden, I was saying, would you like to tell one now? Should we have a joke telling competition? Uh, yes. I'm making, I'm facilitating making them the stars of the show. I'm only there for 15 minutes. Sometimes on really important meetings, they have quite a serious time. They just want something just to bring it down a bit or even perhaps just before they go. So I get the nod from the uh, MD, everything's okay. And there we have a joke telling competition and they will be remembered and talked about forever, ever. What a lovely introdu introduction to a company. So that's what it is. It's the entertainment research in the company that I'm working with, tailoring everything to the company and hammering on whatever it is their message by for them. I can see why they would want you. Uh, I'm, high, I'm high energy on stage. <laughs> You're high energy all the time. <laughs> it's safe. It's, I'm safe. Okay. <laughs> Tell me, what is your favourite, your most favourite, magical illusion? Well, I suppose that my favourite one is, is just saying that I don't make big things appear and, and disappear. Uh, at the launch of the 5 Series BMW, for the VIP uh, customers, uh, they booked the Alfred the Calvine Stadium okay and I was there just for 10 minutes which was a great 10 minutes um, and I got paid a serious load of money for it mm. there but <coughs> what they done during the day they taken the windows out of one of their boardrooms and got this great big tower crane to put two brand new 5 series BMWs in there <laughs> and they'd hidden it in there okay now my job was to do a few jokes and because I've got the world record in passing more 
uh, driving tests than anyone else, I get these type of engagements. So my type of, tell them some motoring jokes, take them outside to the stadium, great big firework uh, display. At the end of it, two new BMWs appear, the fireworks go, the lights go, I get them back inside. And while this has been going on, the room is completely transformed. The two BMWs are now in the middle and it's full of gambling tables and we go on to have an incredible, uh, magical evening. I ended up actually staying a lot longer. We were having so much fun and, sure. and, and having another competition on, on the stage there. I just remember that. Olmanbury BMW. Look forward to coming to see you again. So, and my smallest one really, which of course is, is quite a big one, um, I was performing some magic at a birthday party for a chap, Mike. Mike there was his name. A lovely gentleman. He is the designer, the architect there, for one of the perhaps the most famous hotels in the, the world. It's a seven-star hotel. It's probably the most expensive one in the world. The Baj Al Arab Hotel there. And it's so special that they built an island just to have this hotel on. So my job was uh, to perform a trick for him. Now he's really quite magical himself, so it takes a lot to amaze him. But I made a pack of gold playing cards transform into a pack with his hotel on the back of every single one of the 52 cards. It's a lovely video. It just blew him away. So I suppose that's the biggest and the smallest ones, and they, they, they come straight to mind, yes. It sounds like you put a lot of time and energy into thinking about what your audience and the people that you're going to entertain would really love. What are their hobbies? What are their what, what do they do? And in terms of a new car launch, my goodness, <laughs> fireworks! How wonderful! The whole thing sounds fantastic. What about your preference? Uh, because obviously you do an awful lot of magical illusions, but you also love to do your Tommy Cooper impersonation. Which do you prefer, or is there a preference? I think, really, I, I just love being Tommy Cooper. <laughs> right. I, you know, there's so many magical moments it creates. I mean, I started off being a stand-up comedian. I was on the, uh, in the 80s, the longest-running show on telly, uh, Stand Up Live, and uh, that was on the... Um, Cable, when cable first came into action there, before we had all these hundreds of tables, uh, cables even. So that was my real love. And I just used to do a little bit of Tommy Cooper, like all audiences, if they were a bit tough. Jim Davidson would say, Mike Yarwood, if you had a tough audience, just put on a fez. Because <laughs> everyone can do a Tommy Cooper in person. It wins them over straight away. Yeah. They're all going, <laughs> And off you go again. Well, I was getting rebooked, and they were saying, can you do more of Tommy Cooper? And, of course, I was, I've always been a magician. I performed the props, a member of the Magic Circle. I've won lots of awards and trophies and all those sorts of things. And I thought, well, this is what the people want. You've got to listen to your, your customers, the people that pay your mortgage, really. So Tommy Cooper is great. But when people are saying, can you do something different, then I come back the second time as myself. And they say, well, it's just as much fun. I mean, it's lovely hearing about your motivation, what really drives you to, to pleasing and making people happy. It's fantastic. So, how about some magic? How about some magic? <laughs> and as if by magic, ah. let's finish with a quick trick, shall we? <laughs> OK. <laughs> now, I, I thought of doing this because... This reminded me of when I spent some time with um, Jeff McBride, one of the most famous magicians in the world. And I've been fortunate enough to spend some real quality time with Jeff, along with many other ones as well. But this was the one that he opens his set with at the Magic Castle in Hollywood. And I want to show you half a dozen of my favourite uh, coins here to uh, perform this illusion for you. They are six silver crowns. 1977. What were you doing in 1977? It was the year of our Queen's Jubilee and these were special coins that were minted. Can you believe it? I've actually got six of them. Fantastic. 
Can you believe it? And they are solid. You can feel them. Well, in 1977, I was in the army in an elite squad, polishing up my tank, ready to celebrate the Queen's birthday here. And this is what we call the Silver Cross. It's a free gunfire. OK, and this is right. Now, have a count there to make sure that you can see I've definitely got what I say in my hand. Are you happy with that? Can you see that, Jeff? <laughs> and have a look there. OK, and this is my arms now, the cannons of the tank. They would cross, you'd hear the fire. <laughs> the men would run across and, my goodness me, two there and one has been shot over there. <laughs> Crazy, eh? <laughs> Crazy stuff here. Look, I'll do it again. One, two, three, four. Two in here. Now watch this carefully. Is it these you should be watching? I keep them there at the finger. Or watch those there. I cross my hands. There's a big shot. Bang! And across we go again. And there's just one there. And the second one fires over. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it you very much. Quite heavy. Tommy Cooper was in the cavalry as well. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, they, they are heavy. But you're not allowed to touch them. I, I, didn't, I didn't intend to. Do, do you want to touch them? Yeah, right. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, really? no you can. <laughs> well, thanks very much for that lovely few minutes. <laughs> but here we go. Here we Have go. Have you got anything to do? Oh, you've got another one. One more. Perfect. You can see she hasn't seen this before. <laughs> okay, now how many have I got in there? Wow. And we cross our hands, and it's the shot of the gun. The men run across, and ladies and gentlemen, we salute you.